Hey everyone, welcome to King Worldwide. My name is Lisa, and today we're talking about a summer activity. I started this because I was talking to my sister, or I was thinking, talking to my sister about what we did in the summer, washing walls and things and chores, and I had this recollection of what else could we have done besides chores. And so, to so I was thinking about as a kid and as a parent and what parents can do with children in the summer, especially if they're so busy um, in the school year. And when it comes to summer, they have activities and camps and pool, but then what else can they do? So that's how this all started. But then the Lord said, um, I would like this to be for all my people. This is a great exercise. So it's called the summer activity. And it's something, I hope kids don't listen because it's definitely user fr um, kid friendly, but kids might be like, why did Lisa say this? So I'm going to speak to this as if it's a, an activity for children and parents and what parents can do, um, like if their kids get in trouble or if they need to do something else in the summer, but parents can do it too. So there's eight scriptures. This is just an example. And the reason why this came up in my heart is because, thank you, because a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, subliminal training on fear and on um, the things of this world. And, you know, the enemy is not going to just come right out and say, I'm the enemy. You know, here I am. Cast me out. The way the enemy works is it's very subtle, and he, with especially when it starts when we're young, and he tries to implement fear in things that, like, um, let me just take a roller coasters, riding roller coasters. It doesn't matter if you like them or don't like them. This would be an example. I enjoy roller coasters a lot, and so I always liked overcoming that fear. There's a time and a place for everything, and so sometimes I might have been too young, shouldn't have done it, whatever. But there are times when I reach a certain point that I'm not going to let fear control me. Well, before I understood about the word, I just would do action cures fear, you know, like a self-help book. And that, that helped me get through it. But the real truth of the matter is God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And so as I was thinking about what is the best thing for kids, because as they go through life, there are subliminal fears all the time, not just with roller coasters, but like in sports, in school. And, you know, I remember vividly in third grade, um, a classmate of mine finishing her assignment, like a math problem or whatever, faster than everyone else. And I remember hearing the sound of the pencil going down. Do you know how mad I was with that? Thoughts came, because I was competitive and thoughts came in like, she's faster than you. She's faster than you. She's smarter than you, blah, blah, blah. And that is fear. That is the liar. So what I'm trying to get at, these are things that combat the spirit of fear, even if one is not aware that fear is going on. So we're going to go through them. And so the point is, the exercise for the child or for even an adult would be, sit down and write these out. And the kid might be like, what? I'm not interested. But when they're cut, and I'm going to explain it to you, you're not just going to write the verse. It's about looking up the verse and writing it down. And then depending on how much they need to be disciplined determines how many times they write the verse. So let me just go through it. So for instance, the first one is 2 Timothy 1 through 7, as we see right here. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And that the point is for the child not to just write scripture, but to put it in an object, a subjective form. So for instance, that would be, God has not given me the spirit of fear. He's given me his spirit, which is full of power, love, and self-control. So can you see, by looking that up and writing that down, if even if they're not paying attention, it's feeding their spirit. And it's, it's blocking the liar. All right, look at the second one. Matthew 6, 33. We talk about this all the time in Periscope. And put it towards what we're saying. I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing things. And then everything else is added unto me. So that would be the number. These are just examples, but I just wanted to give you some of them. First John 4, 4. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world, the liar in the world. So you, you 
make the child will look it up and make it for them to be subjective so that they will start learning how to speak to themselves and then in their spirit will quick it'll quicken in their spirit when a situation in life comes up at school or out on the playground and when the liar is trying to get in you don't even have to be like a detective and what are you talking about at school what are you thinking about you can you'll just automatically know oh thank you okay so it's all from the holy spirit always the next one is um first corinthians 13 4 and the holy spirit is the one that gave me what to put down i just pray in the spirit and he tells me so first corinthians 13 4 love is patient and kind therefore i am patient and kind so isaiah 26 3 god's perfect peace is in me because i keep my mind on him so can you imagine i mean i i'd like to know if kids even use a notebook today i know there's a lot of computers and typing but typing would be the same thing it's the exercise of doing this over and over because it will change the spirit and if you do it every day and if they maybe get points or um, stars on the refrigerator or something for doing that then it will change it will change it ch the Word of God changes all of us it, it transforms us all right the next one Galatians 5 16 this is a great one when you have kids that are younger and before they become teenagers especially listen to that I walk in the Spirit of God and do not give in to the pressure in my mind will feelings or desires I decide I'm in charge the Spirit of God in me is in charge okay the next one Romans 12 1 and 2 when they write it in the subjective form I present my body a holy and living sacrifice acceptable unto God which is my true worship I am NOT conformed to this world but I am being transformed by the renewing of my mind which will then prove God's perfect will and then the last one which I thought was appropriate that's on the side if especially if this is a child's activity Ephesians 6 2 I honor my father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise now how many parents would appreciate their children writing that down it really is the scripture of Ephesians 6 2 and it really does have a promise the promise that it, the promise that goes along with the keeping that commandment is you'll have a long satisfying life so this is just again an activity that the Lord quickened in my spirit and yet help me think about how how to help children and how to help parents and even adults when we a lot of people don't like to write but when we do write just like is it Habakkuk says write the vision so that when you run by it you see it we are supposed to write it's a form of meditation I've never said that but that's really why writing helps a lot of people with studying and learning is because it it just gets in more in your system like we do when we it gets in your mind and heart when we do like what we do when we read different translations of the Bible so enjoy the summer activity and let me know if um, you or your children or you know anybody that does do this and we will see you soon have a great day bye